Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. So welcome to the British GP, Silverstone GP, uh, you know, whatever GP you want to call it. We are at the Silverstone circuit for the Silverstone hot lap track guide and setup, everything, you know, the whole package. Yeah, as usual. So um, yeah, thank you to channel members. Thank you to subscribers as well for loving the channel in whichever way you like it. And we'll go through this hot lap first in slow mo, corner by corner, to see uh, what you can do in certain corners, what you should avoid. And then we'll go through double setups uh, one from me, one from Mavis. And finally, I'll leave you with the full speed hot lap at the end. Now, uh, Silverstone, a very high speed track, remember, you will need quite a lot of downforce as well, but you need top speed as well to make sure the car uh, you know, is able to overtake on the straights. Now, to start your lap, um, similar to how you end it make sure you get a clean exit out of the last corner at the start of your lap keep it to the middle of the track here to avoid that bump in the middle and then keep it tight to the curbs and bring it over to the left hand side for the first corner at 100 meter board as the curb starts that's where you want to be braking and then uh, down to third gear or fourth gear on the entry take a lot of it i think this is just on the limit without touching the red sausage there and uh, just bring the car over to the middle a bit more to the right will be ideal to open up the exit even more uh, but this is just about doable right um, and uh, make sure you tuck the car into the apex here and as soon as you feel and you can see the car is almost going to hit at uh, the curb start accelerating and then use the exit curb if we need to keep the car tight to the left but don't scrub off too much steering and again here you want to be staying to the middle of the track because there's a nasty bump in the middle-ish towards the right hand side that's going to lose you some lap time into the braking zone so uh, stay to the middle and uh, heading into the braking zone this is where you can bring it back to the right hand side aim for a very late apex and uh, aim to take the curbstone as well as much as you can and on the exit once the car is straightened out a little bit as you pass the first red curb stone on your right, that's where you want to be braking a little bit just to turn the car into the apex and start accelerating. Get a straighter exit onto the old turn one here. And now heading down into Corp's corner, you want to be looking around the 50 meter board. That's where you want to be turning in or before the curb ends. And uh, on this inside here, uh, try to avoid taking the curb. And uh, you know, sometimes this corner is a little bit RNG. There's a bump here, but uh, anyway, keep the car as straight as possible. Bring the car to the right, so you can start to open up the entry to maggots. So the first part of maggots take a lot of this inside curb. Second part of maggots avoid the red curb stones, but keep it tight to the right hand side, which will help you to open up the left hand side. The first part of packets you want to take as much curb including the red curb stone here and then once uh, you have straightened out the car a little bit towards the end of the curb yeah that's where you want to just downshift to sixth and lift a little bit uh, to get the car turned in for this next right hander here so you'll see how and again for the second part of packets take the red curb stone as well which will help you to open up the exit to chapel and again use all the curb available bring the car back to the left hand side but don't scrub off too much speed and uh, get ready for the last well i wouldn't say it's a braking zone because uh, uh, in qualifying this is still almost flat so at the 50 meter board or as the curb starts just downshift to six gear and a little bit of lift is all you need turn the car point and it turns uh, that's a lot of grip here on the exit use all the curb available and then to the final chicane here look for the start of the curb before that 50 meter bot before the black and white part starts that's where you want to be braking and sacrifice a little bit of the entry here to help you to open up the exit later on so take it in third gear if you need to or fault up to fourth gear and then uh, on the next right hander avoid that red sausage curb obviously right and uh, let the car run wide but keep it straight and start to bring it back to the right hand side and across the line that is going to be a lap around Silverstone 
And uh, very quickly, a big disclaimer here, it's very easy to invalidate for sure. But uh, most of the time here, it's about how confident you can get on the brakes and throttle and uh, how much momentum you can carry from corner to corner. And you can see here on the on the leaderboard, uh, there are some, uh, not say glitch lap times, but you know, it is, yeah. You can cut the last chicane and uh, you can gain some time, but uh, you know, y you won't be doing that in a real race anyway. But either way, let's get into the setup which I'm using here. Uh, I'll show you the high downforce version that I used here, which is 45, 35 wings. That is a lot of wings to be on this car. But in a track like Silverstone where you have high speed corners, you definitely need it. If you want low downforce, you can go down to 40, 30. Even lower, you can probably even go down to 35, 25, but I think that's the lowest I would recommend. Uh, more than that, then uh, any lower than that, you're actually losing a lot of lap time in the corners. Uh, so much so that you don't benefit from the extra top speed on the straights. We move on to the transmission. Very standard, less um, like every other setup, 120, 100. And you can increase the off throttle to 30% for the race. And on throttle, you can use about 90 or 80 in the long corners. Um, but slow corners, definitely I recommend keeping it at 100. And well, everything else like engine braking is the same. Suspension geometry is also the same. Everything minimum for all the tracks. And then we move on to suspension where you can make quite a lot of changes. Uh, for starters, front suspension is at 41 because you have um, a lot of front arrow uh, compared to the rear arrow, right? Plus 10 on the front. So there's a little bit of instability in the car naturally because of that. And by increasing this front suspension, you increase the stability on the front while giving you the grip that you need. And because the front suspension is already very stiff, you can run the car as low as you want, as low as 20. You can even go down to 18, but uh, you start to feel the car becomes a little bit unstable and you lose time on the straights. 22, 23, 24 front right height, I think is also a good compromise around here. As you'll see with the second setup, um, if you need a bit of stability uh, in the corners. As for the rear suspension, uh, there are a lot of bumps here, you will notice, right? Uh, it's a flat circuit, but there are still a lot of bumps in certain corners. So you need a little bit of stiffness on the rear to absorb those bumps. At the same time, you need the rear head to be as slow as possible. So you can't have both, right? Uh, so something like 1 and 60, 63, 64, 65 can also work. But you'll notice a little bit of lap time loss there. So a good compromise I found was stiffening the rear suspension to 8 and running the rear right head at 55, which gave me a good um, balance on the curbs and also uh, giving good high speed cornering. Front and roll bar and rear anti roll bar at 21. Front is at 21, but you can drop it to 19 if you have a little bit of understeer on the exit. Uh, as for the rear anti roll bar, uh, that's again at 21 to give you maximum turn in allows the car to be more agile in the corners especially in the high speed given this track is you know all about carrying corner to corner high speed momentum right and oh that's about it for suspension and we move on to the brakes 100 percent brake pressure and uh, 56 brake bias because there's a lot of front arrow around here at the same time you don't want to lock up the rear into some of the braking zones here you will lose a lot of lap time and a lot of momentum you can still use around 55 54 53 according to your preference if you're comfortable with that i just prefer in this setup in this track uh, a little bit higher and then finally we move on to the tire pressures um hello excuse me my clicker yeah, there you go. So, um, yeah, tire pressures, all maximum for qualifying and all maximum for the race. There you go. That is the first setup from me. And let's get into the second one provided by Mavis. It's not going to be that much of a difference for once, uh, you'll see. Uh, so Mavis has provided us with his version of the setup. 
uh, which is 38 25 wings which is using as a i don't know high down force or low down force but if you want to go higher you can still do the same adjustments like i did like i mentioned um you can go up five clicks whichever that you prefer right uh, if you want more down force obviously uh, more stability as well right with that with that down force uh, go plus five that will be good otherwise just leave it as it is and uh, that's a good baseline to start off and transmission is exactly the same you can do the exact same changes if you want to transmit uh, suspension geometry again is the same and suspension is almost similar for once right um, but yeah you can notice that uh, the front right height is raised to 24 because there's a lot more front arrow plus three front wing although it's just plus three extra from mine but you know it still makes a difference uh, putting up the front right height to 24 helps your car to be a little bit more stable uh, on corner entry and doesn't bottom out uh, well while braking as well as for the rear you can see uh, this slight changes as well a little bit softer rear suspension so you compensate that by slightly higher rear right height so there you can see just the differences in that and then the anti-roll bars almost similar uh, because you already have a lot more front wing you're gonna get more rotation anyway so you can soften the rear anti-roll bar a little bit to reduce the overstay on the exit brakes are exactly the same uh, for once uh, Mavis is using 100% brake pressure uh, for a good reason because in this track there's not much braking required uh, it's all about cornering performance uh, and the exits right and finally tire pressures are also the same hope you enjoy this uh, both the setups leave a like subscribe and leave a comment if you need any help join the discord server i'll see you there and i'll see you next time for hungary